For a good few days now, I've been hands-on with Star Wars Outlaws. So today, we're going to be talking about it. Firstly, I'd like to clarify this isn't necessarily a review, but I will be talking about my thoughts, likes, dislikes about the game, as well as different parts and mechanics of the game. I have about five to six hours in the game, and I have been recording my adventure, where I have gameplay videos on my channel, with the first episode probably being out now. So go check it out. I'd also like to point out that this game was, of course, provided by Ubisoft before release. So thank you, Ubisoft, for sending the game my way. Although I do love the Star Wars IP, and I have watched all the films, I wouldn't class myself as a Star Wars nerd. I'm also not too comfortable with the lore. I just enjoy the movies, the games, and I like the worlds and themes inside of Star Wars. Please do forgive me. If I mess anything up or miss anything regarding the Star Wars lore or anything like that. Although I will avoid any main game spoilers, I will be talking about some early moments regarding the main character, where you start out, etc, etc. Probably about the first hour or so. Now that all that's out the way, let's get into it. Star Wars Outlaws is an open world action adventure game set between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. You play as Kay Vess, a cunning thief, trying to make a life of herself, and leave her home planet of Cantonica, and her home city of Canto, accompanied by a trusty companion, Nyx, which is a Markle. It's kind of like a cute pet doggo in a way. I believe the Markle are a new species to the Star Wars world, and was created in collaboration with Lucasfilm, well, Lucasfilm Games, for the creation of him and the species in the game. During Kay's endeavours to leave Kanto, she finds herself crossing a powerful underworld organisation and becoming wanted by them. She then manages to steal and escape in a stolen ship to a new planet, where she has to find a way to repair her ship. During so, she has to work with three other underworld crime syndicates, the Pike Syndicate, Crimson Dawn and the notorious Hut Cartel. Working for one while pissing off another, Kay continues working with them throughout the galaxies, trying to make a name for herself. So let's start by talking about Kay Vess. Her character design is spot on, and the character really works well, with a kind of cheeky charm. And her voice actor, Humbly Gonzalez, fits the bill perfectly. Kay is fun to play with, and dialogue that fits and sounds perfectly. Emotions are portrayed really well. And I don't really have any neg negative to say about the character design, the voice, or personality. Kay doesn't have an arsenal of weapons or Jedi powers or anything like that. But Kay does use her trusted blaster for most situations. However, this can be upgraded throughout the gameplay. And has different types of shots. Such as an ion shot, which is effective against shields and droid droids. Or a stun shot, which is a silent, non-lethal takedown. Allowing to take out the pesty stormtrooper that's in your way, or just a little too far for a stealth takedown. Enemies do often drop their weapon, allowing Kay to pick it up and use it till it runs out of ammo, which does add some variation of weapons. Kay does have a couple of other tools in her arsenal, with note of a data spike and splicing kit. The data spike, which essentially acts as a lockpick, allowing Kay to open locked doors and chests and containers which is represented in a kind of lock picking mini game where the spike beeps a couple of times and you have to click to the beat different doors have different beeps and rhythms the splicing kit is kind of like a computer hacking kit which has its own mini game essentially it's kind of a simple wordle like mini game where you have to click the icons in the correct position it will be red if it's not correct yellow if it's co correct but in the wrong place and blue is correct and in the right place. They're pretty cool and not too hard. As someone that doesn't really like Wordle too much, I found it pretty easy. I enjoyed it. Not too bad. We can't talk about Kay without talking about her collaboration with Nyx. Nyx is always about either running about close to Kay or even riding on her back when she's grappling or climbing. Nyx has a bunch of abilities. Nyx can pickpocket NPCs collect items or activate buttons from hard to reach places, activate traps or explosions, distract enemies or cameras, or even attack enemies to help with stealth, stealth takedowns. 
Nyx's useful and cute addition to the game, allowing multiple ways to take out enemies and go through different encounters. You can even have the option to pet the cute animal. During Kay's adventures, she gets access to a speeder, a kind of hovercraft bike, allowing Kay to traverse the open world, which is much easier and makes from getting place to place a breeze. And to be fair, it's actually kind of fun. At first, the controls were a little janky, with both A and D controlling left and right, but also your mouse controlling the direction you go, with some UI on the screen telling you whereabouts your directions go. As someone who likes to look around the world while driving, this was kind of annoying. It caused me to turn into a few rocks and drive the wrong direction a few times. But after a while, I found out that you can actually turn that feature off. And yeah, it just makes it so you use A and D to turn left and right rather than your mouse. Allowing you to look around the world while driving. The speeder can also be upgraded from having a speed boost to even like a little bunny hop. Allowing for tra traversal to be even more easy and fun. As mentioned before, K also has a ship. Although I haven't explored this segment of gameplay yet, it does look like there is some ship combat and there are upgrades that can be made to the ship, such as upgraded weaponry, defenses and propulsion. But I can't really comment on that since uh, I've not actually got that far. <laughs> but yeah, it does look pretty cool and I will say my opinions and see how that goes in future. So now we have all the main characters and the equipment out of the way, we can now talk about the gameplay and the gameplay loop. Star Wars Outlaws is an open world action adventure game. However, for the RPG lovers out there, it does have plenty of RPG elements. As stated, most of the missions are provided by the underground criminal syndicates. Each syndicate has a reputation, which we will delve into shortly. But during these missions, you're usually presented with the options which can affect the reputation of each syndicate. For example, you might be hired by the Pike Syndicate to get some intel on the Hutt, 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 Hutt Cartel. When you have this info, you might be approached by the Crimson Dawn, and you can either hand, it, hand over the intel to the Crimson Dawn or the Pike Syndicate. Handing it over to the Crimson Dawn might negatively impact your reputation with Pike, but increase your rep with the Crimson. You get many opportunities like this, and you can choose who you want to have good rep with and who you want to piss off. I'll delve into this more shortly, and we will talk about the effects of reputation. Talking more of the RPG elements, there are plenty of upgrades to your equipment and abilities. Abilities are unlocked by finding experts. These experts have kind of like perks that you can unlock. These aren't always bought or crafted with materials like the weapon and speeder upgrades, but a lot of these are unlocked via actions in game. For example, the ability to bunny hop on your speeder can be unlocked by clearing large distances in the air while on your speeder. With plenty of other ways to unlock the abilities, such as stealth takedown in some enemies or loot in a certain amount of chests. Back on the topic of reputation, each faction has sections of reputation with them. These are terrible, bad, poor, good, and excellent. With good reputation, you can usually enter the faction areas, get a little discount at faction vendors, and unlock some cosmetics from the faction. Excellent being with the ability of being able to take anything in the areas without it being stealing. Bad reputation causes most syndicate members to shoot on sight. And terrible causing hit squads to be sent after K. There are a couple more perks, but we'll wait until you play the game. <laughs> Having different reputations can affect the missions and make them easier or harder. For example, I had a mission where I had to find someone inside Pike territory. And having good rep allowed me to just walk in. However, for another faction, I had to steal an item. I was at a poor reputation with them. So I had to sneak into their territory and steal the item. If I would have had good rep with them, I could have walked in and stole the item. So it shows that having different reputation does affect how you, how you go about certain things. Having good reputation isn't the only way to enter areas and outposts. A lot of areas have multiple points of entry that support different play styles. You can shoot your way through the front door, although it can be difficult at times. Or you can sneak around the back, crawl through a vent, and stealth your way through the outpost. Maybe a bit of both. The game t does tend to focus around stealth, with plenty of options to help you out with this, such as the stated abilities of Nyx, the abilities to whistle, 
and tall grass and smoke being in most areas, so you can sneak through and stealth assassinate your enemies. Stealth also seems to be much easier than just trying to shoot your way through places. Outlaws has a lot of traversal mechanics, with climbing and platforming, similar to that of Jedi Survivor or the Tomb Raider games. Being able to climb up some walls, grapple, swing across places, holding on to ledges and jump into other ledges. Those interactions are rather fun, and I seem to enjoy them, even though I'm not the biggest fan of games with platforming mechanics. The worlds and visuals of this game are very well done. Although the game isn't photorealistic, it's very visually appealing, with variations of planet, scenery. The city hubs feel full, lived in, and are booming with life and NPCs. There are vendors, arcade machines, and gambling opportunities in these areas. You can even overhear NPC dialogues, and some of it can turn into different interactions and different things. A good example of this is I was walking through, and I heard NPCs talking about a certain horse that's guaranteed to win a race. In return, I went and bet on that horse, and I won. So it was pretty much guaranteed profit there. It's pretty cool to see this and hear this, and it... The areas still have like a Star Wars feel to it. While traveling the world, you can stumble across small little outposts and villages, some with some hidden chests. The world also has a little random has little random events, such as helping a faction in a battle against Imperials, or stealing from pirates who you stole from the Imperials, causing you to fight off pirates, and then Imperials landing, and you having to sneak through or fight them to steal the uh, steal the spoils. Pretty fun stuff. I have been playing this game on PC, with my specifications being a Ryzen 9 3900X, 32GB of RAM, and an RTX 3090. Been playing at 1440p, with the graphics mostly being on, on high, with DLSS on quality, and ray tracing on medium. Granted, I was playing on a review version of the game with a day one patch. And the performance was perfectly fine, getting 80 to 90 FPS in the open world, with around 60 to 70 in the dense towns. I didn't feel any dips or anything that made me have to check my frame rate. The game felt smooth and great to play. Although some bugs and glitches were reported, it's safe to say I didn't actually run into anything noticeable, or game breaking glitches or anything like that. There was one point where I couldn't activate a button, but after a few seconds of angling the camera, I managed to get the prompt and press it. I also ran into the I ran into a bug where the game thought I was in combat when I wasn't, so I couldn't actually save the game. However, it does tell you when your last auto save was, and running into a cut seemed to, seemed to fix it. It does look like a bunch of the known bugs will be fixed in the day one patch, but ultimately, I didn't run into anything too big or, or no, and things felt great and smooth. I don't really have any complaints about it. So, I have been having a great time with the game, it feels great, it runs great, and the gameplay loop is fun. I love the RPG elements, and the reputation system is actually pretty good. Considering it's a Ubisoft game, I haven't run into any clear the outpost, clear that outpost, clear this outpost loop. But the game seems to heavily focus on stealth, which personally I do enjoy. But players who hate stealth and want to go in every situation, guns blazing, might actually have a hard time in this game. I feel like a good mix of both stealth and guns blazing is pretty doable and quite fun. I think it's a well-crafted game. If you're a fan of Star Wars and like a bit of RPG, open world and stealth, I think you'll have a great time. If you hate stealth, this might be one to pick up if you catch it on a discount. If you enjoyed this video and my thoughts on this game, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I would also like to know your thoughts if you're planning on picking this up. And if you did pick it up, come back in a few days and let me know what you think. Hope you have a wonderful day, people.